Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time session. Um, here today, we will be covering uh, a panel discussion on the food and beverage sector in South Africa. I'm Alice Ancona, Senior Vice President and COO of the World Trade Center Miami. The World Trade Center Miami is the organizer of the America's Food and Beverage Show. For those of you attending the session, please be sure to type your questions in the chat box or the Q&A box located in the bottom of the screen. At the end of the presentations or at the conclusion of the session, we will go over your questions. Um, so to kick this off, I will, it's now my pleasure to introduce Desmond Alufahai, our moderator for this panel. Desmond is division director for the protocol and international affairs division at Miami International Airport, Miami Dade Aviation Department. Desmond is also a member of the South Florida District Export Council, which is a private sector group which supports the US Department of Commerce's efforts to promote US exports around the world. Desmond is also a member of the World Trade Center Miami's Board of Directors. Joining us on this panel today is Malosi Letzalo from the Embassy of South Africa, Jim Clark from Wines of South Africa USA, and Sali Molepo, uh, Agro Processing Department of Trade, Industry, and Competition. Desmond, the panel is yours. Thank you. Ms. Alice, thank you so much for that very kind introduction and distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 24th annual America's Food and Beverage Show. This is our first time that we're doing this virtually. And uh, from wherever you are in the globe, we welcome you to this uh, very event. So I know today we have uh, crowned today as the Africa's Day in the Food and uh, Beverage Show. And so let's dive in. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our very distinguished uh, keynote speakers uh, who are subject matter experts in their respective fields. And so let me introduce you to Mr. Malose Letswalo. Mr. Malose is cur currently serves as the Minister Economic at the Embassy of South Africa in Washington, DC, which he resumed duty in April 2017. His responsibility as minister include, amongst others, trade policy and export and investment promotion in priority growth sectors for South Africa. Mr. Malose has over 16 years of experience in trade policy space, working in key dialogues for South Africa, such as on economic strategy for BRICS, economic assistance agreement with Cuba, increased utilization and retention of AGUA and South Africa, United States, uh, TIFA, Southern Africa Customs Union, United States Trade Investment and Development Corporation, trade and investment relations with Chile, Brazil, Argentina, Mexico, and Canada. Mr. Malose obtained his Bachelor of Science degree in agriculture from University of Limpopo and a Master's of Science degree in agricultural economics from the University of Pretoria, postgraduate diploma from the Graduate of Business University of Cape Town, and the master, Masters of Commerce in Development Theory from Wits University. Distinguished guest, I present for his opening remarks, Mr. Malose. Uh, just one uh, distinguished guest of the panelists this uh, afternoon. Uh, Desmond, thank you very much for this uh, kind introduction. And uh, also, thank you very much. I think we, from the Embassy of South Africa, we've enjoyed a very good and productive relationship with yourselves at the Miami Dade County. And also we hope to continue to build uh, that relationship in your new role at the Miami International Airport. So no, thank you very much. And uh, I, I think at the Miami Airport, we had the pleasure of uh, uh, during COVID of landing the South African Airways after many years of absence. So we, we are very glad of that uh, uh, continued relationship with the Miami-Dade uh, County. So my role, uh, I, I, I think maybe before I go to that, I must also thank uh, 
the organizers of the uh, America's Food and Beverage Show, uh, the World Trade Center Miami. We have also enjoyed a very good uh, relationship with them over the years as the embassy who have participated in the shows. And we have had a number of companies participating over the years. Even this year, we have a few companies who are participating in this show. So we very much thank you for this platform to talk about the food and beverage uh, sector in South Africa. So uh, my, my role is just to uh, give a few remarks and I'll leave all the hard work to my two colleagues, uh, uh, Soli and also Sojim to talk more about the beverage uh, sector, beverage, food and beverage sector in South Africa and also the wine industry in South Africa. I just wanted to make a few points. And the first point would like, which I would like to make is that uh, I think this point has also been raised in the morning, Desmond, when you were speaking to Laura uh, from the US uh, agriculture, the US embassy in Pretoria about the good relationship which South Africa and the United States continue to enjoy uh, on trade and also on investment matters. The US is our third uh, largest export destination. So we uh, have been doing business with the US for a number of years. And also our companies, we have established shipping lines which you can export or you can bring your products from South Africa into the US. Uh, most of our products and companies are familiar and can meet import requirements into the US, meaning that they are quite uh, export ready uh, to do business. And also we, uh, from the South African side, we continue to enjoy duty-free treatment under the Africa Growth and Opportunity Act, which also incorporates the generalized systems of preferences, GSP, meaning that you can import products from South Africa duty-free into the US. For, so that makes our product coming from South Africa quite competitive in the US. But also generally we have, uh, I think Laura touched on this point about the preferential treatment uh, agreement, which we have with the Mercosur countries, Brazil, Argentina, Paraguay and Uruguay, uh, where we can also export products duty-free into uh, South America. But we also enjoy good relationship with all the countries in Latin America, including with uh, Canada. Uh, the last point I would like to make is uh, just to say that uh, we, uh, as I've indicated, we export quite a number of products to the US, uh, both the primary and processed products from citrus, grapes, olive, macadamia nuts, raisins, juice, wines, etc. So I would, uh, uh, I think from the embassy side, if I can, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Desmond, to say that from the embassy side, we remain available to exporters, sorry, to importers and also buyers who would like to connect with our companies. And uh, then we can provide that connection and a platform. But otherwise, thank you very much for the time. Thank you, Honorable Minister, for your very uh, kind and introductory remarks. And uh, we hope to continue to work with you to bring back South African Airways direct flight from uh, uh, Joburg, Cape Town, into Miami. It now gives me great pleasure to introduce our second keynote speaker for this platform. Mr. Jim Clark is the US Managing Manager of Wines of South Africa. The acronym is WOSA, WOSA, a levy funded marketing body that promotes exports of South African wines. You know, I have to tell you guys, when I go to <laughs> South Africa, they used to allow us to, you know, at the airport, we buy the wines and we box it up and we bring it into the US. If you have not tried South African wines, something is missing in your life. So, uh, Prior to joining WOSA in 2013, Mr. Jim was the wine director at Amani Ristorante and Megu, both in New York City. He is also a writer, regularly contributing to a number of trade and consumer publications, including Fortune Magazine, World of Wines, Beverage Media, and Wine Review Online. His book, Wines of Africa was published by the Classic Wine Library in July. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, 
Mr. Jim Clark. Thank you very much. Um, very happy to be here. Um, we work very closely with our friends uh, like Melose at the uh, Embassy and Consulate uh, for our work, which is uh, centered around promoting South African wines throughout, uh, the, throughout the world, really, though my role is largely confined to the US and to a smaller degree to Canada. Um, as mentioned, well, Wines of South Africa, WOSA is a levy funded organization. So we are paid by the winemakers themselves based on their exports. And uh, that budget is then divided up among about eight different offices in um, Toronto, New York, um, uh, China, and several of the European countries. And we also have a couple of colleagues uh, devoted to the African market and who also do some coverage for South America and Central America. So South Africa is the ninth largest wine producer in the world. We produce about 4% of the world's wines and um, have about 93,000 hectares of vineyards. Among the uh, so-called new world wine producing countries, that is to say the non-European countries, we also have uh, what, depending on how you count it, the deepest history. We have a record of vintages in South Africa going back to February 2nd, 1659 when the then commander of the Cape actually noted the first ever wine harvest and wine um, uh, crushing for, 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 to, for fermentation in his diary. Um, so, so today, South Africa is in a unique position as being relatively new to some markets, especially true in uh, North America, the US and um, some parts of uh, Central and South America and the Caribbean. But at the same time, having that deep history and having grape varieties that are familiar to most international consumers. The uh, most planted red grape variety, for example, is Cabernet Sauvignon. You will also find um, smaller amounts of uh, Pinot Noir, but on the white side, Chardonnay is a prominent grape, as is Sauvignon Blanc. Well, at the same time, the leading grape, Chenin Blanc, is a great signature for the country. So it has it can kind of have its own identity while also catering to the established um, palates of, um, of many international wine drinkers. Production is divided almost 50-50 between um, what we would call bulk production, which is exported by um, in tankers or otherwise um, leaves the wine producer and is, is blended into uh, brands. So that's uh, kind of at the, the value level. And then has about uh, over 40% of the production is what we would call packaged premium production. And some of these are some of the most highly regarded and sought after wines in the world today, and often at an extreme value. Because uh, South Africa does not have the long track record in the in export markets that places like France have, we often find that a wine that rates say um, 90 plus, which if you use that 100 point system that many critics use, South African wines command those ratings, but at a much lower price point than say uh, wines from Napa, wines from uh, France, wines from Italy. So they represent, represent a huge value and we're increasingly seeing the North American clients in particular really learning to appreciate that. And I'll be glad to take any questions and kind of elaborate a little bit more on what's going on in South Africa when we get to the Q&A. Okay, thank you, Mr. Clark. And uh, you know, now that we're all at home, I'll be sure to celebrate uh, tonight with uh, the last bottle of uh, South African wine that I still have in my possession. So I'll make sure I hook up with you in uh, New York so that I can get uh, my new supplies in. Absolutely. So our final speaker for this session, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you, Mr. Soli Molepo. Mr. Molepo is the Deputy Director at South African Department of Trade and Industry, which we always refer to as the DTI, under Industrial Development Division, IDD. He is responsible for agro-processing sector and specifically is spearheading industrial development of niche industries. He is the champion of Sustainable Food Systems, FSF, of One Planet Network. Prior to joining the DTI, he was the Senior Agricultural Economics at the Department of Agriculture, Forestry, and Fisheries, and 
the Western Cape Province Department of Agriculture. At DAFF, Mr. Soli worked on Africa bilateral trade issues and also involved in agricultural trade research. He spearheaded the market access of both smallholder and commercial agricultural producers in the Western Cape province, and that's your um, a Cape Town uh, area. Mr. Soli was involved in graduate program with Cargill South Africa and Industrial Development Cooperation IDC. He qualified at the top of his class. I'm not surprised, Mr. Molepo, that you will be at the top of your class as an agricultural economist at the University of Limpopo, B-U-L. He completed his master's of agricultural degrees in um, agricultural economics degree at the University of Limpopo and master's of industrial policy at the University of Johannesburg. Distinguished guest, the man at the top of his class, Mr. Soli Molepu. Wow, thank you very much uh, for such a kind introduction this month. Uh, I really appreciate. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guest, uh, good day and good evening. I know that here in South Africa, it's, it's during the night. So good evening to everyone across the, the, the world who uh, joined our sessions tonight and today. And I'm coming from the Department uh, of Trade, Industry and Competition. Uh, now is the DTIC this month. It's been changed to the DTIC and uh, we are actually the division uh, that is responsible for industrial development. So it's now uh, industrial competitiveness and growth. It's, this is just uh, with effect from April. So all the time we were industrial development division. Uh, we are in a agro-processing uh, sector desk where we are dealing with uh, the developmental issues uh, regarding the food and beverages and also the entire agro-processing subsectors. Uh, our department is leading the mandate of uh, international and domestic trade, investment, and as well as uh, industrial uh, development. Uh, I'm going to share with you later the slides. I've actually prepared the slides to, to actually give a snapshot uh, regarding the, the sector in South Africa, but I really like to, to appreciate uh, the relationship that we have, we have been having with the United States of America, as well as the other, Afri other countries in America uh, continent. Uh, if you look at our relationships, it's actually a uh, track back uh, for some ages and we are actually enjoying the preferential and free access uh, to the US market under African Growth Opportunity Act. And uh, so we are very honored to be part of this uh, show and we are, we are actually here to, to assist companies to access uh, the African market, not only South Africa, but you know that South Africa is a gateway to Africa. Uh, we are having a, a industrialized uh, country with a good infrastructure, uh, uh, harbors, uh, road systems. So we are here to, to actually tell you more about the opportunities with regarding to food and beverages. So as uh, I will be given an opportunity to share with you the slides, I'm going to, to actually share with you that kind of information when going forward. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chair. I really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, my friend. So uh, again, for those of you just joining us, thank you uh, and welcome again to the 24th annual uh, Food and Beverage Show of the Americas. And this platform we are using to highlight on all things Africa, 
and this is our third and final session. And we have uh, three very distinguished speakers to help us understand uh, the final points of uh, doing trade in Africa. As we have alluded to in the past two sessions, there is absolutely nothing to be afraid of if you are an American thinking of delving into doing business in Africa. Listen, the Europeans are already there. The Chinese are already there. They're not afraid. So how can we be afraid about uh, doing business with uh, Africa? This is an opportunity for you to hear from the experts. And this is an opportunity for you to ask all the questions that you may have uh, to find out about the challenges and the opportunities and what have you. So Mr. Soli, since you are the last speaker and you are still very warm, let me go back to you. Um, what exactly is needed to expand trade between South Africa and North American countries? Uh, because, uh, you know, we were all very excited during the World Cup in South Africa in 2010. Everybody got to see uh, South Africa. Uh, I even bought a Vuvuzela for my son. And, uh, you know, we saw Miami as the bridge between Africa into the countries of the Caribbean and uh, Canada, as well as Latin America. And so can you just help us understand uh, what is needed uh, for uh, to expand trade between South Africa and North America? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Desmond. I think that is a very good question. As uh, it's important that we continue trading uh, as uh, South Africa as well as the, the, the U.S. and all the countries in North America. Uh, if we have already highlighted that uh, America is it's actually one of the, the biggest trading partner for South Africa. We're saying is the third largest. But when we come to agro processing, uh, more specifically food and beverages, uh, we, are, we, we are actually looking at, at, at the 10th position uh, in terms of uh, being uh, trade partners. And there are, there are policy instruments in place, uh, both uh, the countries and the region, they are, they are actually having the policy instruments and uh, trade agreements. We know that we are enjoying unilateral uh, benefits under GSP uh, to the U.S. But we, as a as a as, as a country, we are having the basket of uh, trade instruments that will make uh, companies from North America to enjoy uh, access. Uh, to South African market. For example, we've got a special economic zone, the SCZ, uh, whereby uh, we are providing uh, business, uh, uh, you know, support in terms of infrastructure, facilities, uh, the, the licensing and permitting, and actually the the the, the uh, the way in which uh, we are actually frustrating, uh, actually facilitating that we are doing it through what we call uh, invest South Africa. So once you you uh, you wanna um, come and invest in South Africa and trade with South Africa, so we've got invest South Africa that can also help you to to actually look at uh, setting up in South Africa, so that when we actually have that kind of uh, value chains that uh, they, they support each other. Because when you talk about uh, agro-processing, you talk about uh, value chains, because we've got a primary agriculture that should, that should actually connect with the beneficiation part. So allowing uh, companies to, to actually set up in South Africa and also South African companies set up in North America, it's actually an, an, a one of the, the, the vehicle to, ex, to actually expand a trade between the, 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 the two countries in the region. So those uh, policy instruments, we, we, we can actually uh, exhaust them and we, we, we actually see how 
uh, the two can actually help in terms of deepening and and and, and broadening uh, trade between the two. So as I've mentioned, the SEZ and in, uh, industrial parks, we 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 actually uh, have other policy instruments like uh, financing, industrial financing. So we've got uh, our department, Trade Industry and Competition, uh, Industrial Development Corporation, and other uh, government institutions, as well as a, a private sector that can actually assist in terms of that. So for us, uh, trade is not alone. Trade should go hand in hand with, with investment. So uh, linking investment and trade, it will help us really to, to broaden and, 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 and deepen trade between the two. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, still on that same track, Mr. Clark, um, I know you must have a tremendous amount of uh, a competition uh, right here in our backyard. I'm thinking of the Argentinian Malbec or the Chilean uh, Chardonnay, not to talk of uh, California Pinot Noir or Sauvignon Blanc. Um, so my question, to you is uh, what are the various South African wines that are doing well in North America, given the uh, heavy amount of uh, competition? Uh, thank you very much. Um, the, I, I think it's very interesting that we're able to go head to head largely with um, many of the wines that the Chileans, not so much the Ar Argentinians, as, as you mentioned, they tend to focus on Malbec, but the Chileans produce a variety of wines. California produces a variety of wines, and now we have states like Washington as well uh, producing domestically in the U.S. But um, South Africa, if you look at the top 10 varieties, they're all well, uh, well almost all well-known varieties here in the U.S. So you have uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, you have Merlot, you have uh, Chardonnay, Sauvignon Blanc. These are all popular varieties with the American consumer. And um, thanks, one, to... Uh, a well-established wine industry. And then on top of that, the exchange rate, we were often finding these wines come in at a much better price point in terms of uh, value, you know, quality price ratio than many of the domestic wines. This is something to take a, uh, give a personal anecdote. As, I, as you mentioned, I was a sommelier previously. I worked in restaurants and it'd be very difficult for me to price a California Cabernet uh, by the glass that would be of the same quality as a, um, as a Stellenbosch Cabernet would be, for example. So we're finding that this um, opportunity for people who want to drink better, but don't um, necessarily want to spend 30, 40, $50 a bottle on a regular basis, South Africa is often filling in in that, um, in, in providing really good value, not at the, the, the $10 uh, range, but let's say the 15 up. This is where you really get wines of distinction and character, but that represents South Africa very well. One category where this is particularly true is the traditional method sparkling wine. This is to say uh, sparkling wines made in the same methods used in champagne uh, to contrast to say with uh, the, the simpler methods that are used in making a Prosecco um, to get the complexity and quality that comes from champagne style production. Again, at prices where you can buy a bottle uh, for less than $20, you can enjoy that level of winemaking on a Tuesday night, rather than saying that sparkling wines are only for your special occasions, because champagne in particular has gotten quite expensive. So all those factors have made South Africa well positioned to compete in South Africa, uh, sorry, in the US and, uh, and in Canada and, and other parts of the Americas. Awesome, awesome. Well, I have to say for those of you on this platform, when you visit Cape Town, I know you want to go to Robin Island. I know you want to go mm. to uh, the Cape of Good Hope. I know you want to visit the Tabletop Mountain. Please make sure you visit the Stellenbosch Wine Yards. It's amazing. It's amazing, particularly if you are a wine enthusiast, you know. Okay, Honorable Minister, uh, Mr. Soli and Mr. Clark will not be the only two working uh, today. I know you said mm. you just make remarks and hand over the work to those two, but I'm going to put you to work also. Uh, so my question to you before we open it to the uh, to those in the platform that may have questions is, uh, are there any trade agreements between South Africa and the countries in Latin America and Canada uh, that importers and buyers can use for importing products from South Africa? 
are there any trade agreements available? Unmute, unmute. Thank you. Thank, thanks. So my apologies for that. Thank, thank you, uh, Desmond. So I, uh, I followed your discussions earlier when you're talking about Southern Africa and Kenya, uh, and Nigeria, ECOWAS, and so on, and now talking about South Africa. I think uh, this is truly an African day. I must commend yourself as the moderator for, for I think, uh, your wide knowledge on the continent. And, uh, thank uh, you. Yeah, so thank you for that. So I, I'm coming back to the question, I must say we, we have spoken about our duty-free market access into the US market via AGOA uh, and also the generalized systems of preferences where I think uh, all agriculture products uh, and uh, both primary and agro process enjoy duty-free into the US, except few products such as uh, canned peaches and canned peas which are excluded, but uh, going into, can, I think uh, other products uh, into the US are uh, exported uh, during the off peak. You look at the uh, citrus is op, uh, exported during off peak. Actually, we just finished our export season, citrus export season into the US in October, but we do have also access into, we used to enjoy GSP kind of access into the Canadian market. Uh, but it has since been withdrawn. But uh, most of the tariffs in, I can understand in the Canadian market are relatively low. So we also enjoy uh, uh, access into, uh, into Canada under MFN trade. But uh, we, as I've said uh, in the introductory remarks that we have concluded uh, agreement with Mercosur uh, as the Southern Africa Customs Union where we are having an agreement which allow us to export products into uh, products into uh, Brazil, into Argentina, Uruguay, and so on. But we do have uh, also uh, do business with uh, both export and import also with countries like Mexico, with uh, uh, Cuba and other countries in, in Latin America. So, but we continue to be open with the Caribbean. We have seen quite uh, recently through our uh, high commissioners and uh, representatives in the Caribbean, uh, both in Jamaica and also in Trinidad, that there is a quite an increased demand for South African products in the Caribbean. So we are here to say if, if there are buyers or if there are any importers that require assistance. I have my colleagues, Jim is here. So this year we are here as the embassy to offer any information which you would like for you, which will enable you to source products from South Africa. Thank you. Thank you, Mondarit. So on this, if you are uh, logged into this platform, we thank you for your patience and we thank you for your indulgence. You have been listening to Mr. Malose Letswalo, Mr. Jim Clark, and Mr. Soli Molepo. Uh, Ms. Alice will now open it up to any questions, uh, anything in the chat room. Hi, Desmond. Uh, so far, I do not see any questions in the chat room or okay. in the Q&A. We've been monitoring that, but we do have good participation. Um, so just to share with everyone who is listening, uh, this session is being recorded. We will be replaying it within 48 hours on the platform. So for those of you that want to review the session or um, want to share it with someone else who could benefit from it, it'll be available within 48 hours. And okay. if you'd like to wrap us up. Okay, so um, last question for Mr. Clark. As you can tell, I love South African wines. Uh, so obviously we have uh, COVID now. Uh, why is now a good time for importing South African wines to the US? Well, I think there's been a real outpouring of goodwill, first of all. Um, a lot of Americans uh, in the, who drink wine became aware of the uh, problems domestically. Uh, wine was not considered an essential product in South Africa. The wineries could not sell domestically for a period of about nine weeks, which was, caused quite a, um, a challenge for them. And so we've seen a real interest in support in the category and, and with that rising awareness. Going beyond COVID, however, about, uh, let's see, last October, the US government put a 25% tariff on most French, Spanish, English, and German wines. 
And this has caused a huge problem for importers and for wine fans who want to get uh, many, uh, many of those wines here with a, um, affordable, with an, at an affordable price. So this has caused a lot of wine drinkers and importers to turn towards South Africa. The wines in South Africa have a reputation for having the style characteristics of the old world of France and Spain, much more so than even domestic American wines or wines from elsewhere in, in the uh, Southern hemisphere. So it really has been called out as the go-to country to make up for this challenge that we're facing with the 25% tariffs that are put on those European wines. Wow. Okay, so there you have it, my friends. You have been listening to a panel discussion on the 24th food and beverage uh, program of the Americas. And you have been listening to Mr. Malose Letswalo, the Honorable Minister at the uh, South African Embassy in uh, DC, even though it's warmer here in Miami. So Honorable Minister, we haven't seen you for quite some time. If you want to put on some shirts and uh, t-shirts, just come down to Miami. You have also been listening to Mr. Jim Clark, uh, who uh, gave us an overview of uh, South African uh, wines. And of course, Mr. Uh, Soli Molepo. When I grew up, I want to be on top of my class also. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much again for your indulgence. It now gives me great pleasure to hand over to our own Vice President and uh, COO, of the Miami, uh, of the World Trade Center of Miami, uh, our hostess, Miss Alice Ancona. Thank you, Alice. Thank you, Desmond. Thank you for doing an extraordinary job. And thank you to our panelists for joining us today. In about a few minutes at 2 p.m., we will begin our last African session, uh, session on the African Showcase. We will be featuring African exhibitors on this panel. So I hope everyone will join us for that session. Thank you so much and have a good afternoon. Good, good evening. Thank you. Thank you all.